Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the City of David Weekly Bible Study. I pray that this has been a blessed day for you. Pray that God has richly and truly uh, covered you on today with grace and mercy. Not only you, but your family and everybody connected to you. Tonight we're continuing our study in the book of Nehemiah. Uh, we'll hang out in Nehemiah 6 or we'll begin our lesson in Nehemiah 6. And then we'll continue. And see, let's see how far God will take us on tonight. I believe that there's a word for the house. There's a blessing with our name on it. For that we give God the glory, honor, and praise. And so tonight we're talking about the power of discernment. The power of discernment. Let us pray. God, we say thank you, we adore you, and we magnify you. We exalt you above the earth. There's none like you, none greater than you, none superior than you. And so we give you glory and we magnify you, God. We exalt you. 10,000 tongues. It wouldn't be loud enough, holy enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, praise God. And so Nehemiah 6, we're continuing our study of the book of Nehemiah. And what has gone before us, come on, let's, let's, let's talk about it. Nehemiah was given an assignment to rebuild the wall. And he was given the encouragement that his enemies would be given resources to him that he might complete the wall. And some of that happened. But in addition to being blessed, he also uh, attracted some critics, some that did not want it to happen. And they spoke ill will tried to distract him and that didn't work and then they ratcheted up their discouragement and tried to ridicule him and that did not work and then while he was in the midst of the assignment they even came and said come down let's have a conversation real friends and real supporters probably would have said after you have completed Let's come down. But he was being distracted by critics and enemies who told him to let's come down in the midst, right? And so before we go any further, you should know the book of Nehemiah in summation. It's a book about a man given an assignment to rebuild a wall. He's given a prophecy that he can do it and God would be with him. And then he has some critics. Nehemiah life is not unlike many of ours. We've been given an assignment. We've been blessed, but yet we have critics. The difference in Nehemiah's life and some of us is that Nehemiah didn't allow for the critics to stop him. Right. He kept pressing his way. And because he kept pressing his way, the assignment as we left off last week happened. Or it was close to happen. And so we'll pick up right there, but what I want you to understand is that you got to have the power of discernment. Because God will send some people in your life, and they'll be there to bless you. Well, you know that, right? There's some people in your life God sent, and they were a blessing. You can't deny it. You'd be lying if you said anything other than that. They're a blessing. But there are some other people that come in your life, and they're the opposite of a blessing. Wish I was talking to some real people tonight. I'm not going. I'm not going to talk bad about people, but they're just the opposite of a blessing. They just, they're just not meant for you, right? And so Nehemiah understood which from which, and he teaches us. And so let's let's pick up around about chapter six, verse five, and then let's continue on with our lesson, if that's okay. And so we're talking about the power of discernment. The power of discernment. Verse 5, chapter 6. Then, the fifth time, 
Seven Mountains sent his aide to me with the same message. And in his hand was an unsealed letter in which was written, It is reported amongst the nation, and Jessam says it is true that you and the Jews are plotting to revolt, and therefore you are building the wall. And moreover, according to these reports, you are about to become their king and have it even appointed prophets to make this proclamation about you in Jerusalem. And there is a king in Judah. Now this report will get back to the king, so come, let us meet together. Usually when people gossip about you, they don't put a name on it. But this text puts a name on it and said people were gossiping. They, you know, it's always a they. They were gossiping, but Jesse, he confirmed it. Jesse said, it is true. You only did this for your own gain. You're trying to become the king. And up to this point, Nehemiah did not have the title, but she sure enough had power, right? It lets you know that you can be powerful even without a title. You can be purposeful without a title. And let's not just talk to the good. You can be less than powerful without a title. You can be unproductive with the title too. And so he said that there is a report. Now let us meet together. Verse eight, I sent him this reply. Nothing like what you are seeing is happening. You are just making it up out of your head. And they were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. They all thought that if we could pump, what well, we used to say in the streets, Brother Derek, if we could pump Kool-Aid in their chest, huh. yeah, right, they'll quit the work. Uh -huh. If we could just talk to them, some people don't even try to physically stop you. They just use their words. Because they understand that there's power in words. Very few people have ever tried to get in your way. Come on, let's be real. Some people ain't that bold, right? But what they will do is subtly tell you, you can't do that. Or why you want to do that? That's impossible. It sounds foolish, right? They're trying to use words. And so... He declares that they wanted them to stop the work. But verse 9 is a testimony for us. Because what is the B clause of the verse says? But I prayed. Yeah. Amen. When you know people are opposing you, prayer ought to be the first thing you do. Amen. When you know you are coming against opposition, prayer ought to be the first thing that you engage in. Now watch what Nehemiah says. Nehemiah says, I pray, now strengthen my hands. Notice Nehemiah understands who his real source is. When you're trying to do anything, you got to know what to plug into. Amen. Amen. Right? He knew that God was his source. And so he says, God, if you strengthen my hands, nothing they want to do will prevail over your strength. And God, if you do it, you don't do anything halfway. See, many of us at that moment, we would have cried out for humans to help us. But the humans only can help you according to, according to their ability. God helps you. God has all power. Right? God does not do anything halfway. And so God, if you strengthen my hands, no matter what they say, my hands will not grow weary. If you strengthen my hands, God, no matter how long this process may be, my hands may not grow weary. The text says, one day I went to the house of Shemai, son of Delight, the son of Mahidabah, who was shut in at his home. He said, let us meet in the house of God inside the temple and let us close the temple doors because men are coming to kill you 
By night they are coming to kill you. Now on the surface, when you read that, you say, okay, his friend gave him advice that was good, right? I personally don't necessarily like the friend's thinking because what the friend is suggesting is that we are only safe when we are in the house of God. Right? But you know and I know that wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? There's liberty. Right? You and I know that the blood, it can reach from the highest mountain. It can flow to the lowest valley. And so I have the, you have the security of God even when you're not in the temple. If the security of God was only uh, in the walls of the temple, then every time we left the temple, we're not secure. But the blood still, somebody will clap your hand, but the blood still works. And even when I'm not out in the temple, I'm still in the presence of God. And as long as I'm in the presence of God, I can believe that his eyes on the spirit, so surely he watching over. Right? Now, some suggest that Shemaiah may have read scripture when the psalm is declared in Psalm 61 and 4. I will abide in your tabernacle forever, and I will trust in the shelter of your wings. But the wings of God extend far beyond the temple. Because watch this. If the wings of God only extended within the temple walls, then when they were building the temple Ezra, then they were under, they were not under the wings of God. But I'm here to tell you the only reason they completed the assignment is because they were under the wings of God. When you read Ezra, which we read time after time, week after week, they fought opposition after opposition, so the wings of God was over them. I need somebody to understand, even when you're out of the temple, the wings of God are over you. When you're in the hospital room, the wings of God are over you. When you are at your school, everybody that's going back to school, the wings of God are over you. When you at work, the, when you in these streets, the wings of God are over you. It's not just confined in the temple. The text says, watch this, but I said, should a man like me run away? Or should someone like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. I realized that God had not sent him. Amen. See that? See that? I realized that God had not sent him. The power of discernment. I believe that from the moment that he went to the house, Nehemiah was continually in prayer. And when he got in the presence of his friend, and his friend gave him some words, Nehemiah was still in the presence of God, and he still was inquiring of God. Prayer ought not ever cease. And in the moment of inquiring of God, God told him, this is not for you. Right? And what I like about Nehemiah is, when Nehemiah inquired of God, watch this, and he heard back from God, then Nehemiah did not get brand new and do the opposite. Some of us pray to God, God, give me a sign. God, give us a sign. We do the opposite. God, give me a sign. God, give us a sign. And we do the opposite. God, give me a sign. I'm waiting on you, God. God, give us a sign and we do the opposite. Amen. No, y'all don't want to go there. Okay, let's go there. God told you don't deal with it. God told you that wasn't for you. Right? You stayed there. God showed you stuff about the individual. You stayed there. God slapped you with some stuff that the individual did. And you stayed there. And then after that, you leave and what do you say? Well, God, where were you? God was there all along. Nehemiah, when he heard what was for him, the power of discernment told him, don't go. I still about to tell somebody in this next season, make sure discernment is a part of your prayers. And not only discerning people, but discerning things. God, what is it that I should be engaged in in this season of my life? 
God, what ministry and what activities do you want me to place my hands to? That ought to be your prayer in this season. You ought to be praying to God because when you pray to God, I believe God's going to give you fulfilling work. What is fulfilling work? Fulfilling work is work that adds to your life. Many of us do work that is unfulfilling. And when we do work that is unfulfilling, watch this. What happens is that we get burnt out. When you do work that's unfulfilling, that's probably an assignment that God did not have you to do. When you, when you see people say, I'm burnt out, many times I suggest to you they're burnt out because they are engaged in assignments and work that's not God's intent for their life in that season. Because when you are engaged, y'all don't want to hear this, but y'all don't hear When you are engaged in work that's intended for your life, God will not only strengthen your hands that you might do the work, but watch this. God will strengthen your personality and character so that the things and the people associated does not distract from your assignment. Right? That means when you are in your lane, when you are in your assignment, yes, you're going to have some people that get on your nerves. Yes, you're going to have some people that's dragging your name. Yes, you're going to have people that you got to look both at. Yes, you're going to have, but God will give you a spirit to know how to engage those people and watch this, how to disengage. Amen. Amen. And when you learn how to engage and you learn how to disengage, watch this, you learn how to respect your own self. And when you respect your own Sabbath, you learn how to pull away, yeah. fill back your tank, and then get right back into yeah. your assignment. Yeah. But when you are in unfulfilling work, or work God did not assign to your hands, right? You're not praying about your personality and your character and your, and your spirit, and now you're arguing with fools. Yeah. Right? And we learned last week, what did we learn last week? That when you are engaged in unfulfilling work, it's going to have a negative effect on your house. Yeah. Somebody need to hear that. Yeah. So the next time you want to run around your family reunion, run around the church doing everything, I want you to understand whether or not God has called you a discerning for that work. Right. Right. The text says, watch this. And I realized in verse 12 that God had not sent him but that he had prophesied against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. He, it said that he went to the house of this guy. This guy let him in, but this guy was hired yeah. by his enemies. Uh -huh. And I'm pretty sure when he got in the house, they broke bread. Amen. I need somebody to realize that every now and then you breaking bread with your enemies. Y'all yeah. ain't talking back to me tonight. Every now and then you breaking bread with some folks you ought to be praying about. Amen? Amen. You ought to be, because watch this. If you pray about some of the people you breaking bread with, you going to see that they are a Shemite in your life. They're not there to help you. They're there to hinder you. They're not there to help you go to the next level. In fact, they're trying to block you from getting to the next level. Right. Text says that he realized. Then he says, he had been, if he had been hired to intimidate me so that I would commit a sin by doing this. And then they would give me a bad name to discredit me. Remember, Tobiah and Sambalit, my God. Because of what they have done, remember also the prophet Noah died. And how she and the rest of the prophets have been trying to intimidate me. And so the wall was completed. Now notice, Nehemiah said, God, these, my critics, are your battle to fight. Some of y'all got to learn that prayer. God, these critics are yours to fight. Now notice the, the language that Nehemiah used. Nehemiah does not get brand new. Some of y'all get brand new. 
God, you ubiquitous God, I'm just praying, God, that you would just have your way in my life, God. Be a fist all around. No, Nehemiah gets specific. He calls them out by name. Yeah. This, what does he say? He says, Noah Dyer has been lying against me, remembering God. No. Sam Valley and Tobiah has been lying against me, remember. He does not have he does not talk in generalities. He talks in specific language. Every now and then you better learn how to get specific with your God. Every now and then you ought to learn how to say, God, I need, I got an enemy by the name of mm. God, I'm asking you to deal with. It. God, I got an enemy by the name of mm. And sometimes your enemy is not a person, it's a thing. God, this food is my enemy. God, this dope is my enemy. God, this shopping is my enemy. God, this lack lethargy is my enemy. God, you better learn how to call your enemies and offer them up to God. Nehemiah offered them up by name. Say, God, I want you to remember. Remember, God. And what Nehemiah knows, watch this. Nehemiah knows, <laughs> Nehemiah knows the encouragement and the omnipotence of God. Because notice where you, right, we human, right? We, we forget some stuff. We forget the slack, right? You forget the last time you walked in and they treated you bad. You forget the last time you was at the family reunion and they talked slick about you. You forget the last time you was in a church meeting. She could have stood over, but she had like she was saving seed and didn't nobody ever show up. You forget that kind of stuff after a while. But what he's saying is, God, I know your memory is everlasting. God, I, I know your memory is eternal, God. I, I can't depend on my memory, but I'm, I'm trusting on your memory. God, when they did the wrong, God, remember. Remember, God, remember. And so when he says, they tried to intimidate me, but he says, but the wall, somebody shout, the wall. The wall. The wall. The wall was completed in 52 days. 52 days they completed a wall. 52 days through opposition, seen and unseen, they completed a wall. This is a wall that was broken down for 100 years. Anybody could have did the work, but nobody did the work until Nehemiah showed up. And when Nehemiah showed up, Negroes had an attitude. Negroes started talking about him. Many times, it's plenty work for everybody to do, but people won't start talking until you lift your hands and start doing the work. It's much work to be done, but ain't nobody doing it. But the moment you step out, everybody want to talk about you. They could have done it last year. They could have done it two years ago. They could have. But the moment you step forward, Negroes want to act as if you're doing something brand new. Could have been done. It was. It was broken for a hundred years. In 100 years times 365, that's what? That's 36,500 days. Right? It could have been, it could have been, no, that's 365. It could have been done, right? But y'all didn't do it. But Nehemiah had a mindset, but watch this more importantly, Nehemiah had God. You see why when you have God, you can do the impossible? I'm talking to somebody right now. You see how when you have God, ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough. You see when you have the hand of God, you can look at demons in your life and say, devil, get thee behind me. You see when you have the hand of God on your life, you can break generational curses off your family. This is the last generation where we're going to have folks that's going to have high blood pressure. This is the last generation we're going to have folks fighting dementia and fighting Alzheimer's. This is the last generation we're going to have somebody strung out on drugs. This, this is the last generation we're going to have somebody with heart problems. This is the last generation somebody in my family going to suffer from cancer. This is the last generation we're going to have a bunch of uh, mixed up families because everybody ain't standing. This is the last Y'all ain't even been dealing with the problem 100 years. They were dealing with the problem for 100 years, but when Nehemiah showed up with God, God made a way. Yeah. And, 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 and the text says, watch this, verse 16. When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. 
when you're doing a good work. Now notice from verse 15 to verse 16. Come on, let's let's, let's use our let's use the great mind that God has given us. Nowhere in that text does it say that they went out and self-promoted. Nowhere in this text does it say that they went out and made banners. They went out and put it in the newspaper. They went out and called the news station and said, come, come cover us. I stop by to tell somebody when you are doing some good work for God, that work is going to speak for itself. When you are doing some good work from God, I don't care if the preacher don't call your name. I don't care if the missionary don't call your name. I don't care if the usher boy don't call your name. When you are doing some good work for God, it's going to speak for itself. And not only is it going to speak for itself, watch this. It's going to make your wood be enemy back off and sit down. Yeah. It's going to make your wood be the next time you are doing some good work, just say this work is going to speak for me. Yeah. This work is, don't try to argue with nobody. Don't stay up late night trying to defend. Just, when you know God has told you to do something and you walk in that lane, know you're going to face opposition. Know you're going to face hard times. But know this also, if you and God is on it, then it shall be done. Because the Bible says in Philippians 1 and 6, he that has begun a great work in me shall complete it. Can I stop right now and give somebody an opportunity to go ahead and give God some glory because you know that there's some assignments on your life. Can I stop right here and give somebody an opportunity to clap your hands because you know, nobody else knows, but you know what God has told you that you should be doing and now you know God has the power to do it through you. Would you open up your mouth tonight? That work, it's going to speak for you. You ain't got to always get your name. Don't worry about these folks. Don't worry about them calling your name. Don't worry about making no, making no post on the gram or post on Facebook saying, look at me, all I'm doing extra. No, just go do the work. Because when you do the work, the work will speak for itself. And the work will make your enemy sit down and behave. He realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. Notice Nehemiah says that God did it. When God do it in your life, give God the glory. When God do it in your life, tell the world God did it. Hashtag God did it. I didn't do this, God did it. God did it. God did it. And watch this. He says also in those days, the nobles of Judah were sending many letters to Tobiah and replies from Tobiah kept coming to them. For many in Judah were under oath to him since he was the son-in-law to Shachaniah, the son of Ero, and his son Johanan had married the daughter of Meshulam. Moreover, they kept reporting to me his good deeds and then telling him what I said and Tobias sent letters to intimidate him. Notice Tobiah is steady doing what the enemy will continue to do. And that is fly back and forth seeking whom it is that they can divide. But if you know God helped you defeat an enemy before, you got to know God can do it again. Because God is the same God yesterday, y'all told me, today and tomorrow. Am I looking at anybody who knows that God has defeated? I mean, you can give God the glory tonight because you know in your own life God has defeated one demon. One demon. Can somebody just clap? You know when you look back, God. Now, the same God that helped you defeat that demon is the same God that will help you defeat, defeat the next one. The same God that brought you past that demon is the same God that will do it again. Once again, this is not this is an invitation right now to go ahead and give God the glory. Because you know the same that God that helped you defeat that Negro is the same God that's going to help you defeat this Negro. The same God that brought you out of that situation is the same God that can bring you. Continually trying to intimidate. Now I need you to understand the wall is built. Uh -huh. You was trying to intimidate us before we got started. 
you was trying to intimidate us while we were doing it. Now the wall is completed and you're still playing your game. Come on. The text says in verse 7, now after the wall, chapter 7, after the wall had been rebuilt and I had set the doors in place, the gatekeepers, the musicians, and the Levites were appointed. And I put in charge of Jerusalem my brother Hananiah, along with Hananiah, the commander of the citadel, because he was a man of integrity and he feared God more than most people do. I, I want to pause right there. I want to pause right there. Because I, want, I don't want nobody to miss what's going on right here. Okay. I got Pastor Coleman Knight here. She's a scholar, so I got to break. Now, understand that after they rebuilt the walls and after he put the doors in place, the text says that he went and gathered the musicians and the Levites. The musician was those who beat on the instruments, and the Levites were those who set up worship. Yeah. Don't miss that. After God has blessed you, you got to find some place in order to give God the glory. After God has blessed you, you got to find some place to say, if it had not been for God on my side, that's why when we come to church, even before Rose and these songbirds get up here singing, if you know God has blessed you that week, no flipping. If you know God has blessed you that day, when you come up in the sanctuary, you ought to come up in the, in fact, while you drive into church, you ought to be having worship in your car. God, if it had not been for you on my side, I don't know where I would be this morning, but I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus and Jesus you have made a way out of nowhere text says that when the wall and see what happens is many of us watch this what happens is many of us we go through situations in life because the Bible is clear. Man born of a woman will have hard times and difficult. And so you're going to go through some situations. But watch this. When we go through situations, we fall out. We call everybody that we can. And everybody that will pick up. Girl, this job is driving me crazy. Mama had it, this job is driving me. Brother Junior, this job. Sister Junior, this job is driving me crazy. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. And then when God deliver you, you get brand new. When God give you a new job, you go to the mall. When God give you a new job, you go to the club. When God give you a new job, you go to happy hour. But well, when you going to pause and give God the glory, because the same God that will whip you in is the same God that brought you out. You have to learn how to open up your Who got the glory? The Bible says that me, I like Nehemiah because Nehemiah understood it was God. And because it was God, I gotta give God the glory. And he said, I gotta go get the musicians and I gotta go get the Levites because they know how to play better than me. And they may know how to sing better than me. They are the singers and I am the praisers. And I gotta go get them so I can give God the glory and the honor and the praise. So I'm stopping by tonight and tell somebody when God do it. You better find a place to give God the glory. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, yeah. watch this. I'm gonna give somebody. I'm gonna give somebody a tip, Sister Trina. When God do it in your life, get watch it. Don't wait till Sunday. Right. I mean, if, if you right. see God moving right. on a Monday, right. don't don't do God like that. Don't 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 do God. Like that. If you see God working on a Tuesday night like tonight, don't do God. Don't 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 wait till Sunday in order to give God the glory. Right where you are, you better learn how to shout. Right where you are, you better learn how to do your day. When you see food on your table, you better learn how to give God the glory. When you see this Delta variant running around and you ain't picked up COVID yet, you better learn how to give them. I'm talking to anybody right now that want to open up your mouth and give God the glory and the honor. saying we perfect. I'm not, I'm not saying we better than anybody else, but what I am saying is that we open up our church in May, and I have not heard nobody yet came up with that Delta virus in this place, in this house. You better learn how to give, I mean, you better learn how to, I mean, you better learn how, I mean, you better learn how to give God the glory and the honor
was at the service today. Y'all was with me. I was at the service. And, and the preacher said, man, y'all open up. And, man, how, how y'all doing? And I said, the, the blood. The blood. He said, I said, the blood. He said, y'all been up with me? I said, the blood. He said, well, I know churches that didn't get started till June. I said, we've been in it since May, man. He said, y'all been in it? I said, yeah, man, we've been in it since May. I, I said, the blood. 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 The blood. The blood. The blood. I said, the blood. The blood. sanitizing machines, and yeah, we got some purifiers, and, and yeah, we learned how to walk through the doors and take temperatures, and yeah, we learned how to, you know, put on gloves, and yeah, we did all that, but we got the blood. We got, we got the blood, the blood. We got the blood. We got the blood. And we got the blood. And so you got to learn how to give God the glory. Now, my head, now, the second thing I want you to show in this text is this. Why? Nehemiah understand that when God bless you, understand this, when there's an anointing on your life, you don't have to be intimidated or insecure yes. around your folk. Yes. 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 When God has blessed you and you know that God's hand is on your life, you don't have to be intimidated or insecure around your folk. Because notice the text says that when Nehemiah got the Levites and the musicians, what did he do next? He ran and got his kinfolk. Oh. He got his brother and he elevated his brother yes. because he realized the same God that brought him to this point yes. is the same God that will take him somewhere higher. Yes. You got to learn when God bless you, it's nothing for you to reach down and lift yes. up your yes. brother. Yes. When God has blessed you, it's nothing for you to reach down and lift up your sister. I come at the city of day. I come against that spirit of discord and that spirit of jealousy in the name of Jesus. I come against that spirit of strife and that spirit of envy in the name of Jesus. I come against it and curse it at the root. I don't care what y'all did at that church and this church, but at this church, you will learn how to celebrate when we see God moving in the life of somebody else. You will learn how to put your hands together and pour into another individual. Ain't nobody going to have to park two, three, four blocks away because they don't want to pull up in their new whip. Ain't nobody going to have to wear their new outfit to the club because they can't wear the devil. Based on the ability to handle it. 
Y'all know what I'm talking about 10 years ago. If my mother, when I was 14, right, and my brother Aaron would have been 18, and my oldest brother David was 20, and my mama had came into a new Lamborghini, it would have made sense for my mother to give it to my brother David. Because he had the ability to handle it better than me and my other brother. You got to learn how to associate some gifts based on the ability of some individuals. Let me say this to y'all. You can't bless people before they're in position to handle it. You can't bless people before they get in the position of handling it. Because it's going to come off as you bragging. Right. You got to learn how to be prayerful as people mature in Christ so that when you bless them, they can receive it and not lose it. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. You got to learn how to let some people mature in Christ yes. so that when you bless them, they can handle it and receive it properly. Yeah. Right? Because what does it say? Nehemiah says, I could make Hananiah the commander in chief because he over security. And anybody over security ought to be a man of what? Integrity. Integrity. Mm -hmm. Integrity. Yeah. He didn't put him over the cooking. No. Come on, y'all. He put yeah. him over security because he was a man. If we're going to have somebody counting the money, we sure enough better have somebody counting the money that we can trust on and depend on. I don't care how gifted you are and how much you come to church, everybody ought not be in the finance room. <laughs> we have the church. Everybody ought not be, Sister Russell, in the finance room. Because everybody can't have, everybody who's not gifted with that ability. And we can bless them with a position, but the only thing we're doing is setting them and us up for what? He put somebody in position who was a man of integrity. So the skill matched the position. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So the next time you come to me and say, Pastor, why you never call my name for such and such? Pastor, why you been giving me that assignment? Uh, I'm going to say, it's a Nehemiah spirit upon me. <laughs> Nehemiah spirit upon me. And when I hear from the Lord, you're going to be the first person I When I hear from I ain't playing with y'all, man. Y'all don't get me in trouble. 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 When I hear from the Lord, you're going to be the first person I call. Text says, Text says, And I said to them, The gates of Jerusalem are not to be opened until the sun is hot. And while the gatekeepers are still on duty, have them shut the doors and bar them, and also appoint residents of Jerusalem as guards, some at their post, and some near their own houses. So watch this. Not only does Nehemiah show favor by elevating them to position, but Nehemiah continued to lead them and continued to teach them. Right? It's not just enough for you to give somebody. You got to show them. Right? Come on, talk back to me, a parent. You got to show your child. You just can't give them something. You got to keep talking to them. Right? Nehemiah kept talking to them. Y'all in position, but what y'all should do is put some people on the gates. Yeah. What y'all should do is put some close to the gates by their houses. So if they get tired, they can go in, get yeah. a quick break and come in. He's yeah. teaching them so that they can keep. God never wants you to wants to bless you for you to lose it. Right. 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 Wow. That's never the intent of God to bless you so that God can come back and take it back. Amen. God don't need to do that. God intends yes. to bless you and bless you. Yes. Right? Yes. And many times he has to come take you back because you can't handle the bus. All of us don't have haters. 
God has sent some good people into your life. Yeah. You couldn't handle them. He had to come and sit them somewhere else. Yeah. Right? So he says, I kept talking to them. No, he says in verse 4, and then we're going to skip to, got a little time, we skip to 8. Now the city was large and spacious, but there were few people in it. And the houses had not yet been rebuilt. And so my God put it into my heart to assemble the nobles, the officials, and the common people for registrations by family. And I found the genealogical record of those who had been the first to return. And this is what I found written there. And so the rest of seven is just the, the, the records, right? So let's go, to, let's go to eight. Let's go to real quick to eight. We won't get through all of it, but let's go. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their town, all the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. And they told Ezra, the teacher of the law, to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. And so on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. And he read it aloud from daybreak to noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, the women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Now watch this. They got in trouble all those years. Why? Because they lost the book. Right, right. Now that the work is being done, what Nehemiah is letting them know, even though you have accomplished something, you ought not walk away from God. Right. Even though you have accomplished something, you ought to still keep reading the word because every time you read the word, there is revelation, there is manifestation, and there is insight. Don't ever get to a point where you stop reading the word. That's why I don't care if you don't come to Bible study. You ought to open up your Bible and read the word. And you ought not just read the word every now and then. As much as you can, you ought to read your word. He is gathering them because they understand the importance of reading the book of the law, which is your Bible, which is your word. Now, they had to go somewhere so that somebody could read it to them. You got it at your own house. You got it on your own cell phone. There is no excuse for us to still be only knowing in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. You got good understanding when you sing them songs. You got good understanding when you read all that mess on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Then you ought to open up your mouth. And if you don't understand how they, you can get a message version on your phone that will talk the language that you want to talk. Them Negroes, those Negroes. You better learn how to open up your Bible and you got the glory. Texas, they had to go to the gates to hear Ezra read the word. You can get the word right in the comfort of your house. But you don't. You don't. They had to get somebody to come read to them, but they understood without the word, we can do nothing. Because man does not live off of bread alone, nor that gumbo, nor that chicken that y'all eat. Man must live off of what? The word of God. The text says, Ezra, the teacher of the law, he stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion. Behind him on his side were others. Ezra opened the book, and all the people could see him because he was standing above them as he opened it. And the people all stood up in, in church. You know why we stand for the real? I'm teaching somebody now so you can know your Bible. Because some of y'all, well, this is why we stand for the reading of God's word. We stand for the reading of God's word because we are mimicking this book, this chapter, this verse right here. So the next time you say, Pastor, why are we standing for the reading of God's word? We're standing because they stood up when Ezra gave them the word. That is why we stand out of reverence for what God showed through Ezra, and we stand up for the reverence of God's word. 
Now they did it. You can do what you want to do. But in this house at the city of David, we stand for the word of God. Because we believe in the three L's. We're going to learn it. We're going to live it. And we're going to know it. I don't care what they do at that church. I don't care what today y'all saw me out again. And this is we get we get lax. You know, I'm telling you, we get lax. We get, we get lax. Sometimes the preacher will say, don't stand, and you can stand if you want to, or you can listen and be obedient to the preacher and sit there. But here's what we say. Well, we stand in service at church. But when I go to a funeral, I don't need to stand for the word of God. This does not say they, that they were at a funeral. This does not say they were at a service. This said Ezra was getting ready to stand up and read the word of God, and the people stood up. We were at a funeral today. The young lady got up, and she was going to read the word. You saw pastors stand up because I heard the word, and because I heard the word was coming, I stood up Amen. out of breath for the word of God. I counted a joy to be able to hear the word of God, and I counted a joy to be able to understand it for myself. I don't need no middleman. I don't need no interpreter. I can hear the words for myself. The word today was what? Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, the plans to prosper you, and the plans to bless you. I don't need no interpreter for that. So I stand up for the reading of God's word. Text says, Ezra praised the Lord, the great God. And all the people lifted their hands and they responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. They praised the Lord after the reading of God's word and they bowed down. And so if you are watching tonight or if you're in the house tonight, if anybody ever asks you, why do y'all stand for the word of God and it's flustering you, I would be disappointed. Because we, we, we learn it now, right? Next time them Jehovah's Witnesses knocking on your door, they got this question, you better get this question right. I don't care if you don't get nothing else right, you better get this question right. We stand because Nehemiah said in his book that Ezra stood up and the people stood up and get the word. Don't you let them make you hide in your bathroom because right. you don't know your word. You know your word. Right. You pay a bill at the house. Open up that door and talk your Bible. Right. Text says that the Levites instructed the people in the law while the people were standing there. Verse 8. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. That's why when anytime we are in study, we got to want to be clear in the interpretation of God's word. Shame on us if we leave and nobody understood what was said. Shame on us if we leave and nobody was there to try to teach us what the word of God was saying. Text says he gave meaning and the people understood. Then Nehemiah and Washington, and I believe because the people understood Washington, they probably kept coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody want to be made feel like I don't know what's going on. Right. Amen. Nobody wants to be made feel like y'all are all over my head, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they had an understanding. Text says that Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest, and the teacher of the law. And the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. And Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks. Some of y'all probably think that means. <laughs> Amen, somebody. I ain't even look up. And some said to those who have nothing prepared, This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is what? For the joy of the Lord is what? For the joy of the Lord is what? In Jesus' name, we're going to pause right there. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands if you got something out of tonight's lesson. Come on, clap your hands if you got something. Uh, tonight's lesson. So we're talking about the power of discernment and what God will do. And for that, we give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. This is a good night. Tonight is a good night for you to join the city of David.
If you want to join the city of David, just go ahead and type hashtag all in. And I declare that you can join our church on tonight. We won't make you run down no aisle and do all these hoops and loops. Tonight, you can be a member of our church. So if you would just type hashtag all in, we will flag it and reach out to you that you might fill out the application and become the newest member here at the city of David. Amen? Amen. I want to thank all of you for uh, praying with the family. It was a, it was a city of David. Uh, Holy Ghost party today as we celebrated the life of Mom May. And Brother Ross talk, talked to me as I, I left saying how much he appreciated uh, uh, all that we have done and the cards he has received. And so I thank you from the bottom of my heart. We're praying for so many. I'm praying for Sister Paulina Brooks. I'm praying for the martyrs, Brother, Brother, uh, Brother Greg and Sister Roxanne, the Bennett family, and the Rogers family. We're praying for her. Sandra Briscoe, we're praying for Sharon Patterson, we're praying for the Gaines family and the Benefield family, the Roseboro family, Sister Shantae Ellison, Eureka Young, Bishop Young, I'm praying for you, the, the Strong family, we're still praying for Sister Christy Wise, we're praying for you, Brother Daryl May, we're praying for you, yeah. Reginald Alexander and Mama Vera Harper, we're praying for you, Troy Nelson has a praise report, he's on the other side of this variant, we're praying for you, Sister Sabrina. We're praying for you, Sister Pamela Sims. We're praying for you, the Taylor family. We're praying for you, Sister Taisha Harvey. We're still calling your name, my sister. Uh, uh, Reverend Lee Norris May. We're still calling your name, Shalay Johnson, Sister Kiasha Macklin, Brother uh, Kenneth Stan Stanberry, uh, uh, Brother Ray May, and Al Johnson, and Carolyn Johnson Willis. We're praying for you, Esther Daniels. We're praying for you, Ali Frazier. We're praying for you. Barbara Loren, we're praying for you. Sister Willa and, and Tylen Dasher, we're praying for you. Brother Andrew Ryan and Dr. Tamai Johnson and Sister Kanita Lewis, we're praying for you. Mother Alma Thomas, who's on her way to be 100, we're praying for you. Sister Yolanda Robinson and the entire Robinson family, we're praying for you. Brother John Downey, we're praying for you. Walker Posey Jr., we're praying for you. The McCray family and the Wendell family, we're praying for you. Brother Richard Griffin, we're praying for you. Cyrus Johnson, we're praying for you. Brother Sammy Davis, I'm praying for you, my brother. Sister Wanda, Sister Kia, baby Jason, we're praying for you. Uh, Uncle Nate in the building, we're praying for you. Uncle Gus Briscoe, we're praying for you. Veronica and Imani Hayes, we're praying for you. Bootsy Briscoe, we're praying for you. Booker T. Stanley, we're praying for you. Marced May, we're praying for you. Eloise Tenner, we're praying for you. If you are yeah. typing a name right now, I declare that we are covering that name Hallelujah. in our corporate prayer. Amen? Let us pray. And I do have an announcement after our prayer. God, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you for what you have shown us tonight, God. How your word has jumped off the pages, God. And we believe no matter what, God, the assignment that you have given us, God, it can be done with you as our help. It does not matter the opposition. does not matter the critics, God. If you be for us, nothing against us will prosper, God. For we are more than conquerors, God. You are our life and our salvation. Whom and what shall we fear? God, you are the stronghold of our lives, God. And what shall we be afraid of? When the wicked come up against us, God, we declare they shall stumble and fall. For great is thy faithfulness. Mercy shall be new each day. We thank you on tonight, God. We give you glory on tonight, God. For every family represented, we lift up to you. For every name, we lift up to you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, I lift up uh, DeAndre and Sister Naisha in the passing of their grandmother, a faithful servant of yours, Mother Wells, God. We know and believe by faith that she will hear those words, well done, but we need your help, God, as we process it, God. This pain is new and fresh, God, but we stand on your word in Matthew 5, God, that we that are mourning shall find comfort, God. And so we praise you tonight, God. We give you glory tonight, God. 
We magnify you on tonight, God. We believe that all things shall work together for our good. And so even before we see it work, God, we're going to go ahead and trust your word and clap our hands. Give you glory, God. Magnify your name, God. And look toward the hills, realizing all of our help shall come from you. God, I pray right now that you will watch over us, God. Keep us in perfect peace until we come back at this appointed time, at this appointed place, to study your word and to give you nothing but prayer and praise. We love you and adore you and we magnify you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, praise God, praise God. I want to uh, just remind you of this coming weekend event. It's our cookout, and so we are having, we are planning to have a wonderful time at Columbia Park. We are setting up at 6 a.m., and I need it, uh, some of you all who can get up at 6 a.m., you may say, Pastor, that's too early for me, I'll just be getting in. Well, come at as soon as you can get ready. You can get ready at 8, come at 8, come at 9, but we need help. And not only do we need setup help, but we're going to need breakdown help. Because that is a public place. We declare we're going to leave that place better than where we found it. We're not going to leave a mess because we serve a great God. And so if you would do me a favor and come and help us and invite family and friends, I just feel like we're about to have a good time and we're going to give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Can y'all help me with that? Amen. amen, amen, amen. Let's have a wonderful time and let's come together and give God the glory and the honor and the praise. I love you much. I'm praying for you and your family. I'm praying that God go before you and be behind you. And I'm praying that nothing come against you shall prosper. And I will look forward to seeing you on Saturday, Sunday, or for some of you all next Tuesday. Love you much in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.